Okay, one more. Um, and I wanted to do a variation on the other ballistic pendulums, penduli, uh, that I had done before. And instead of being pinned, because there's so many that are pinned, I want to do one where I, um, I, I, where it's not constrained. All right, so I guess we could try to imagine this thing being on a horizontal surface, maybe, and somehow. There's no friction, and so maybe it's on the ice. Maybe it's on the ice rink, and this thing actually has some height, so the ball is actually hitting onto the surface. You know, if you can imagine that, right? And um, so this one kilogram ball sphere is moving at two meters per second when it strikes the end, uh, right here. Well, not quite the end, just off of the end of this uh, stationary slender rod B. If the velocity of the sphere after the impact is 0.8 meters per second, what is the coefficient of restitution? Um, okay, so let's see. Where, what is the ball weighs? What, the ball is one kilogram, and uh, um, the stationary thing is two kilograms. Okay, so we have kind of this setup. We kind of know what everything is. And um, so here is, a, this is the uh, solution manuals uh, thing, so, or whatever, it's Bedford and Fowler's uh, diagrams. So there's a little bit of variation from what we're used to here. Um, but they've made a diagram, a, uh, a, a, a inertial diagram uh, onto this thing. And, and I can, um, maybe this is like the uh, before or the initial and here's the after, right? And these two things are equal to each other. And they gave us a bunch of stuff here in the solution. The distance of the point P from the bar is 0.4, and linear momentum is conserved right there. So we need to use linear momentum as well as angular momentum. Right, uh, because so so the, here's a case we don't have to worry about the reaction forces at the pin. So the and, and by the way, the all of these things. Well, well, the uh, the one that we care about here is going to be at the center of mass. Right, that's a VCM. That's the important one when it comes to uh, taking the linear. Uh, acceleration, excuse me, linear velocity, the linear momentum, and it's at the center of mass. And V A and V prime are the velocities of the sphere before and after the impact, right? But we're going to need to use V P is the point of impact, right? So we have a different velocity to use in the um, equation up here than we do in uh, the coefficient of restitution. The coefficient of restitution has to be the localized velocity. And the point P is stationary before the impact. And um, so, so therefore, uh, we can uh, rewrite this right here that they've just rewritten this um, and that equation two. And they're calling that equation two. They're calling this equation one. So we have equation one and equation two. And now uh, we proceed with doing a little more analysis. They're saying equation three is from kinematics, right? So what we've done right here is we've figured out the relative velocities because we want to have the velocity of the center of mass, right? The velocity of the center of mass and the prime means afterwards, right? So uh, what we really were doing right here is we're saying the velocity of P is equal to the velocity of the center of mass plus the velocity of P with respect to center of mass, right? Um, where we know that the uh, velocity of P with respect to the center of mass, this guy right here, right? If we were gonna draw it like um, a diagram there, right? We're gonna have uh, this fixed. So we wanna find this P with respect to the uh, uh, center of mass, that guy right there, that VP, with respect to the center of mass, and this right, right, right in there, that this distance. Um, well, okay, wait. I got to be careful because p should be a little higher, right? It's actually like right there, right? So, so this distance is going to be uh, d, I think, from what they had before, right? They're, I think they're going to call this d uh, right there. 
Yeah. So they're saying L over 2 is D. That's this distance. All right. So here's L over 2. And here's minus the little D that they're, they're saying right here. So th this is the distance. Um, and then they're subtracting it back out. That's why there's a minus sign over there. Because then they say, oh, well, the velocity of the center of mass is going to be the velocity of P. Uh, and these are all primes, by the way. Minus that relative velocity. And so that's where we have this distance times the omega prime. All right. So that's the uh, explanation on, on where we have equation three. Um, we still have uh, three unknowns, right? Because we had the velocity of A that's known. The velocity of A prime we didn't know. Velocity of center of mass we didn't know. And velocity of P we didn't know. And omega we didn't know. All right. So we, we have uh, three equations, but there's still four unknowns. So um, we substitute to, uh, to get equation four. Right, so we substitute two into three, and so we can get this relationship. And then we uh, get this equation five by substituting back into equation one. Um, but then, so, so in doing so, I think we're left with um, a couple unknowns, right? So we have um, four into here. So it was VA prime and omega prime is what we didn't know. So uh, now this one, what we've done right here is we've taken the sum of the angular momentums, right, before and after. I don't know why I'm putting the parentheses on the outside right here. Get rid of all that the sum of the uh, momentums, and I haven't said where it's about yet. Okay. And so let's take it about um, point P, right? So they take it about the point of the impact right there. So that's going to be about P. And if we do that, you notice there's zero right here right because we're traveling right through there so taking it, everything on the left hand side is going to be zero and then so we take the uh, but we take the velocity the velocity of the center of mass right there is a velocity of this thing that's going to be going uh presume well um let's say it's going to be good that one's going to be going clockwise isn't it yeah we're predicting that it's going to go clockwise this vcm prime so it's going to be the mass of the bar times VCM prime and that distance now once again that's in between here right um, and then also we're saying we're, we're going to say that this is going to go counterclockwise and that that is in agreement with each other right uh, uh, this right here because if we take a look at there there's the velocity to the center of mass we would be saying it was going to the right and they are in agreement we have to be careful when we do that so we agree with all this so that's a, another equation so now we can put these two things together and we also know that the icm right here was 112th ml squared and if we put some values into this what we end up in these two equations um, and for two unknowns, we get the omega is going to be 1.08 radians per second, and the coefficient of restitution is going to be 0.224. So since I've already got the models made, I'll pause the video, and I'll see if I get the same uh, or similar angular velocity after all of this, if I use that 0.224, uh, because I can't really... Um, but we can also see what the motion looks like of this thing, that it's going to be translating and rotation, rotating after, uh, after this. So let's, uh, let's check it out. I'll pause and uh, create the model, and we'll see. Okay, so um, here I've made uh, modeled these in SolidWorks, and uh, so we could take a look and see what happens here uh, with that coefficient of restitution. Boom. And you can see that this thing is um, now now it's translating and rotating. In fact, if I wanted to, I could um, probably uh, use up a little memory here. But um, let's just see what happens there if we would uh, start from the beginning here and let it calculate its way out. Let's see how this thing moves, right? So you can get kind of a sense 
of this thing flying uh, across the ice because that's really kind of what what it's like it's right it's, uh, where, where we have this maybe a hockey stick and a hockey puck and we we uh, slap the thing right on there and see what happens boom there's no losses or anything so it's just going to keep on moving um so let me uh graph and try to get uh, some values out of this um, we get the displacement um get the linear velocity we can get the magnitude if we'd like um, but I'll, I'll just get stick with the x component of this and uh, we just create a plot and so let's see here um it, it's not we are in uh, millimeters is that right we're in millimeters per second um i can change everything i think i could change it into meters will that change yeah because we're starting off at two right so we wanted to um in order to see the thing it needs to be uh let's see let's make this zero as our start and let's make this like 2.2 with a uh, increments of point of point 0.2 and little increments of 0 0.05 or something I don't know it doesn't matter uh, so you can see this right so you can see that it's uh, dropped down and now it's uh, speed afterwards is something that's below um, 0.8 um, did we figure out what that ball's uh, velocity would be after um, after this? I don't think I ever calculated that, um, but we definitely could. Um, choo, 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 choo. VA2 is 0.8. Okay, yeah. I, I calculated when I was doing it. So let's see, did I? Uh, so 0.8, yeah, we're like right there. Um, it's matching up with uh, what we our expectations. Let's take a look at. Um, oh, we can also we can also get angular velocity, right? So that's one of the things that we. Um, so I got found the velocity at C. I don't have a point on this. The I think that's the center of gravity. Is that what I call it right here? Um, no, I call on mine. I called it point P. So we don't have a couple of things on there. Uh, to measure. So actually what we have to do in order to do that, I'd have to come back into part one right here and maybe add some uh, points onto there. So I'll add a sketch and I will draw, um, let's draw a point like oh, right here. I'll put one right there and maybe I'll put one right here right okay so I'm not exactly in the right spots um, I'll put a center line onto this and uh, I'll just attach it right there okay so what I want to do is attach these points these points were just floating in air but now they're attached to that line and um, this guy right here, actually, I could have like uh, made it easier for myself, but he's going to be the center. So um, I'll go from this reference to right here should be one meter, right? Cause the thing's two meters long, and this distance, right from there to there. Uh, remember, it was 0.4 to the end, so it's 0 0.6 here. Um, one of the issues that we might have is that, you know, you know, in terms of getting accuracy is that I, I'm hitting, you know, I have this, it's rounded off, right? I really made the distances uh, from the centers of these uh, circles right here. But anyway, we have two points, and by the way, in SolidWorks, when it's black in a sketch, that means it's fully defined. So uh, we can save that now and go back into our assembly, and if I haven't given it a name yet and um, it's still back in there but now that we've changed this thing it's going to be mad at us well it wasn't mad at us um, we have to uh, uh, calculate it again because it's in, got a new thing in the model um, so I calculated so we could say beforehand that the center of or no point C is going to be traveling 1.2 1.248 after this so um, let me see let's uh, graph it um, again and so I'm gonna have uh, displacement of uh, velocity 
and uh, let's only get the X component. Just make our lives easier. And it's going to be, uh, when you know, darn it, I picked the wrong spot. <laughs> I have it upside down. Um, but I can uh, quickly fix that. All right, so I will just go back in and change my sketch and uh, edit the sketch. And I'll just add in another point. Why not? I'll put in another point right there on the line and make him this time uh, from here to right here is going to be 0.4. And that, so now it's 400 millimeters. And uh, save and then go back into uh, my assembly. Um, so go back into the motion study and let's recalculate the thing. And who's texting me? One of my friends from high school. All right, so that's uh, you know I, I extended the time uh, of this thing just to just to kind of watch the thing as it moves and try to imagine what that looks like. I will um, put this onto here and select and find a velocity. Let's make it of that point and linear velocity and only in the x direction and um just for ease i'm just going to add it to the same plot what screws up the solidworks is always putting like a uh, 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 an extra scale onto the thing so it has two different scales so you can't really compare these until you until you fix this right here i think this is the one that's going to be messed up so um, it's not a matter because I'm just going to export it to um, SolidWorks anyway. But I should make it, to, if you want to make it pretty, make it to the same scale and make the major units. What I make the major units was 0.2, right? 0.2 and the minor units were 0 0.05. Oops, almost did it for me. And so now you can kind of see that's that's the uh, of that point right in there. And you can see it's going to be, you know, if I want to expand this out a little bit, you could guess it's going to be 1.2 something and what did i say what did i calculate i said 1.248 so what if i come down to uh, this and i export to a spreadsheet it uh opens up the spreadsheet up here separately and there you go uh right here and um did a little bit of a time there 1.223 is what we have um is the velocity of this um, that we uh, find uh, a a afterwards. And you also notice that it's 0 0.7752 is um, what we have for uh, the velocity of the ball afterwards, right? So those are pretty good, those are pretty good matchup. Anyway, um, it's kind of interesting stuff to mess around because um, because I have the tool available. And uh, so there's another example and probably the last example of the semester. But um, you get to see some solid works and some simulation. Uh, I got to get better at Comsol. I'd like to use Comsol. Um, there's also a, a package called Atoms, which is a very well-known uh, dynamic analysis tool. So I'm going to try that one too. So we'll talk to you soon.